here we are in the parking lot in Curry Village. About to head up and go hike up to Nevada Falls today. Past Vernal, up to Nevada. But first, we must have some breakfast. Gotta have breakfast. That's the key to big hikes, is a good breakfast. Okay, Ribs, are you ready to go? Ready to go on a beautiful hike? Go see Vernal and Nevada Falls? Are you all set? Let's do it! Good morning, everybody. We are setting out to hike up past Vernal Fall, up to Nevada Fall. We haven't been up here in years, and of course this is my son's first time. So why not come out and hike to these beautiful waterfalls? And the water's flowing very, very nicely, so it should be a pretty, pretty epic hike. Coming into the Vernal Falls footbridge, where there should be a pretty good view of the falls themselves through the trees here. Pretty good amount of water flowing too. Good sign for the summer ahead. That is the regular trail, that's the mist trail, up to Nevada, or sorry, Vernal, and then up to Nevada. And this is the John Muir Trail. And of course, we're taking the John Muir Trail to the harder route. And if you're gonna go hike, go on a hike, you know? No, just kidding. But this, is, uh, this trail offers some great, great scenery, which you'll see coming up in this video, so stay tuned. So I think we just made it to the top of the switchbacks. Not too bad, luckily it was all shaded. Ah, oh, look at this view. Isn't that gorgeous? Got Glacier Point up there. That is the backside of Half Dome. I think that's Liberty Cap. And now we're coming up to the viewpoint for Nevada Falls. So pretty back here. Almost to the top of Nevada Falls. Now we just gotta continue heading up the John Muir Trail, which will connect over to the top of, an, of Nevada Falls. And then we'll take the side side route on down.
we have made it to the top of Nevada Falls and it is gorgeous. All right, just had a nice lunch. Now it's time to hike back, and this time we're gonna go down the right side of the fall. We came up the left side along the John Muir Trail, and now we're gonna take the right side down, which I think is just called the, uh, the regular Nevada Fall Trail. Look at my little dude. Completely wore out. We just came down the right side of Vernal Fall, if you're coming from the top, and that side is very steep and slippery. So if you're gonna do this hike, I wouldn't recommend going down it with a baby if you're bringing your baby or child along. It's pretty steep. of the bad fall. down the mist trail. Wow. 
Look at that river. Look at that. So if you've gotten this far, I take it you're interested in this hike and probably want to better understand how to do this hike yourself. So I'm hoping that this behind the scenes will help you and guide you in planning for your hike and ultimately having a very successful hike. So we'll jump right into it. This hike I'm calling the Vernal Nevada Fall Loop in Yosemite National Park. The trailhead for this hike is very easy to find as it is in the end of Yosemite Valley in Happy Isles. There is plenty of parking at the trailhead and I highly recommend getting to the trailhead early because parking can become full very quickly. An alternative means to getting to the trailhead are by the Yosemite Valley shuttle and the shuttle doesn't always operate year round so be sure to check on the shuttle schedule just to be sure you can use that to get to the trailhead. So the good thing for this hike is you do not need a permit. This trail actually shares the same trailhead as the Half Dome hike. And if you did the Half Dome hike, you would need a permit to hike up Half Dome if the cables are up. I believe if the cables are down, you do not need a permit, but it's very sketchy when the cables are down as that means it's probably winter time. This trail is extremely popular and on a scale of one to 10 and 10 being very, very crowded, I would rate it at 10. This trail is great in the summertime as there are so many beautiful sights to see, rivers are flowing, waterfalls are gushing, and the temperature is normally great. But keep in mind, this is the Sierra and weather can change at any time. So it's always good to pack a light jacket if you're going in the summertime and maybe even a rain jacket if there are clouds that are threatening. So in the summertime, if you're doing this hike, you can expect temperatures between anywhere from 70 up to about 85. It can get quite hot in the Sierra. I think a lot of people really underestimate how hot it does get in the Sierra, but just keep in mind, if it's summertime, it will most likely be hot. So I would bring layers and always bring a light rain jacket because you never know if it's gonna rain. I would not advise doing this hike in the wintertime. It is safe to hike up to the Vernal Falls uh, viewing footbridge, but going beyond that might be a little risky depending on your hiking level and your fitness level as well. So I highly recommend doing this hike in the summertime when the trails are snow free and much safer to hike. The total ascent for this hike is just under 2000 feet at 1,917 feet with a total distance of 6.74 miles round trip. This trail starts at approximately 4,000 feet above sea level and taps out just below 6,000 feet. This hike took us four hours with lunch. You can easily do this hike in two and a half or three if you kept moving and if you were short on time. So we hiked this as a loop, but you can do it as an out and back. It just depends on what you would like to do and how much time you have. We hiked this hike counterclockwise, which for me had the best views. I've gone both ways and I find that going counterclockwise is the best way to go. Uh, but it's totally up to you. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise, or hike out and back if you love the same trail so much. So I would rate this hike as moderate. The first part of the trail is very easy. It does have a pretty good grade, but it's also paved and it's kind of made of this asphalt material. So it's very easy hiking up to the Vernal Falls viewing footbridge. And once you get past that, then you start to get on actual trail itself. And that could be a little more challenging, especially if you took the way that we took up the John Muir Trail where it gets kind of steep and there's a bunch of switchbacks. But all in all, I would say this trail is moderate. There are no places to camp along this trail as well. So if you're planning to go out backpacking, this isn't the trail for that. So water sources along this trail, there is a drinking fountain, believe it or not, right at the Vernal Falls viewing footbridge, which is very useful. There's also a bathroom up there. So if you find that you hike up and because of all the people, there's nowhere to discreetly go to the restroom in the wilderness, uh, there are restrooms up there. So you can hike up, refill your water bottle and also use a bathroom, which is kind of weird because you're in the wilderness. 
I find it useful when other hikers share tips for trails that they've done. So I thought I would share my perspective on this trail and maybe some insight to help you have a better hike as well. And one of those being is to go early. Uh, if you go early for this hike, you're gonna avoid the crowds and also you'll avoid the sun because there is a lot of exposure on this hike, believe it or not. You are in the woods, there is tree cover, but there is quite a bit of trail which is exposed. And if you're not wearing the proper sun protection, you will pay for it. And if you have a dog, leave the dog at home because the dogs are not allowed on the National Park trails. This trail is semi-kid friendly. I mean, I took my son River on the trail and of course he was able to do it because I carried him. So if you do have a child who is interested in hiking this trail, going up to the Vernal Falls viewing footbridge is totally possible. If you go beyond that, I would just watch them, you know, maybe hold their hand because if you go up the Mist Trail, which leads directly to Vernal Fall, the trail can be slick and you don't want to have your child slip or have any accidents. And if you go veer right up the John Muir Trail, it does get more challenging and you might need to take more breaks. So just keep that in mind. Luckily, as this is Yosemite Valley, there is the Yosemite Valley store, which is a couple miles from the trailhead. So before you head out, you can always pick up snacks. There are plenty of good foods, healthy options as well. So it's really, really helpful to stop in there to fuel up before heading out on this hike, just so you have exactly what you need. So because I was carrying my son River, I shot this film on my GoPro. And this is just a little wind muff in case you're wondering. Um, this is the GoPro Hero 8, I believe. I've been using this for quite a few years. That's pretty cool. Then also my iPhone, which I take notes on and read to the camera on. <laughs> I also edited this film on my MacBook Pro using Final Cut Pro. And I get all of my music for my films from Epidemic Sound, great, great library of nice ambient music, and I love their stuff. Links to the items that I shot my film with, including what I edited on, what I edited with, and any of the gear that I wore in this hike is in the link in my description below. So check it out if you're interested in any of these items. You can also follow me on Instagram where I post content in real time from trips I may be on. And it's also a good way to contact me if you need to ask me a question. And if you have any questions I didn't get to, please ask them in the comment section below and I will be sure to answer your questions.